Welcome back to Anderson Acres. We're in the kitchen again. Today we are going to make a braided French loaf. Now my dough is already prepared. If you want to know how to make the French dough, you want to refer to the video I linked to in the description because French dough is not regular dough. This has, I've been making this for eight, nine hours now. <laughs> it's been a while. So to know how to make your dough, refer to that video. But once you have your dough, Instead of shaping into baguettes like we did in that video, we're going to do a braided French loaf. Now, this time we're dividing the dough into three. Again, cut French dough. Don't try and tear it. French dough hates being torn. So you have your three pieces. Okay, you want to roll them out into nice long ropes. Nice long ropes, very, very long, because you're going to braid them together. When you braid things, they get shorter. So if I were to use it only that long, well, that's not really going to work out because by the time you braid it, it ends up this short, stumpy little loaf. So we're going to roll this out and I want to go to about the length of my cutting mat. Now, if you don't have a cutting mat, just estimate. It's not really difficult, but oops, rolled up the edge of my mat there. Didn't mean to do that. But yeah, about 20 inches, 22 inches, somewhere in that vicinity. Set that one aside. Then you want to try the other one. So you just roll until you have three about that length. They should be the same length. If they're different lengths, it's going to look weird when you're done. So make sure they are the same length. And then you want to do one at a time and let them relax a little bit because the more relaxed your dough is, the easier it is to work with. Okay? Also, that's a little bit thin. So try to keep it roughly the same diameter. It's pretty forgiving, so like it's a little skinny over here, but that's okay. I'm lining it up with the fatter side of the other one. It's not the end of the world. As long as they're the same length. So you can kind of fudge it a little bit. And we're just gonna do a basic braid. And I'll show you how to do that in case you don't know how to braid bread dough. It's kind of like braiding your hair, actually. It's not dissimilar. So first we're just gonna finish rolling this third one out, I'm pushing my sleeves up so they stay out of my way. Jeez. Rolling things always makes my sleeves fall down. So there we go. There we go. So we're gonna start our braid by pulling these down here so you can see a little bit better. There we go. So just line them up together so that they're about the same size. You want to Roll them kind of close because we're going to be braiding them and we don't want them too far apart. So pinch your end together, then you're going to tuck that under, okay? Kind of give it a little push. You just don't want that little pointy thing sticking out at the end. So now we're just going to do a basic braid. So now that you have these connected, you can roll these a little bit further and just start crossing. So cross there, cross there, roll this one out of the way. And do roll them. You notice how I roll them out of the way? That's what you want to do because it kind of gives your bread a little bit of a twist. So then pull this one, pull this one, roll this one out of the way some more, and come over. Okay? Roll this one out of the way this way, and come over that way. Roll. And so you're just going to come out, and you're just going to finish your braid. Now this is going to take a while to rise. So again, push, 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 tuck it under. Now this end, I don't like how that looks. So like here, you're gonna fluff it a little bit. You're actually gonna tuck that under again, okay? That starter end, because it never looks as nice as your finished end. So just gonna do that, and then you're just gonna back it off a little, just so it has about the same height, and just do some pinching on the sides here so that doesn't flip out on you. But that way, your starter end looks nice, because if you just leave it the other way, it kind of rises weird. So this is what your braid will look like. Now you're going to want to put this on a pan and you're going to want to set it aside for about an hour and a half to finish rising. Remember, this dough is still fermenting. Oh, that's nothing on there. Sorry. No, it's nothing. I thought there was something on there. Turns out it's just a crack in the dough. It's fine. Just fix a crack. So you want to set this aside for about an hour and a half on a tray in a damp, warm location. I'm using my microwave. You can just put a damp tea towel over it. Try not to let the tea towel touch it so it doesn't get stuck to the tea towel, okay? So we're just going to 
set that aside. Now, as we're setting this aside, we also want to prep our oven. Your oven needs to be at 450 degrees, which I know sounds high, but for French bread, it's not. So 450 degrees, you're going to want a little cake pan. I will grab my cake pan and show you. This is my little tiny cake pan. I'm going to put this on the bottom rack of the oven. The second rack is going to be in the middle. So one on the bottom, one in the middle. This goes on the bottom rack. It is going to need to be preheated with your oven so that it's really, really hot. Just so that when we put ice cubes into it, like we did with regular French bread, we create a lot of humidity. So set this aside, prep your oven, 450 degrees. Stick this pan in there so it all gets nice and hot. So we'll see you in about an hour and a half when hopefully this braid has risen up a bit. Welcome back. Our bread has risen up fairly nice. Hey, look how pretty that is. Sorry for hitting the camera again. I'm doing that a lot today. But so our bread is all pretty nicely risen for a French bread. Sometimes they have a harder time rising, but this one actually looks really good. So now it's time for it to go in the oven. Remember the oven is set at 450 degrees Fahrenheit and you're gonna bake this for 25 to 40 minutes. I'm gonna air around probably 30 to 35 minutes. You can bake a little less or a little more depending on how dark you want the crust. I tend not to go the full 40 minutes, but of course you can. Now I also have a cup of water here, okay? We used ice cubes in the original French bread recipe that I had posted that I have linked to in the description. I'm going to show you that you can do this with water. You do not have to use ice cubes. Ice cubes are convenient because they're not messy, but you don't have to use them. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna open our oven, we're gonna shove the bread in, we're gonna pull out the tray, dump the water into the cake pan, and we're gonna do it all as quickly as we can. I'm not usually very quick at this, so hopefully, in goes the bread, out comes the tray, in goes the water, push that tray back in without spilling the water everywhere, close it up, we're not going to look at it again for 25 to 40 minutes. I'm going to check it around the 30 minute mark. Alright, so we will be back as soon as it's done. Well, our French bread, our French braided bread, has been in the oven for half an hour. Look at how lovely that is. The water we poured into the pan created a very humid environment for baking, so it's super crisp on the outside. To maintain that crispness, you want to let your bread cool before you cut it, though sometimes we rip into it anyway. My children will be home momentarily, and I swear they're going to devour this in about five minutes. But that's how it looks. You don't coat it with anything because you want to maintain that crisp, crisp outer shell. So nice and crunchy, very soft on the inside, beautiful bread. So try this yourself. It's really easy, a lot easier than you'd think. Thanks for joining us today. If you'd like to see more of our videos, please like and subscribe. And we'll keep baking for you as long as we can. See you tomorrow.